In Monster Hunter World, there are many aspects to consider when taking on a hunt. The target, your weapon, these are all important, but hunters who want optimal performance need to consider the build they use via the armor and gear they wear. I'm Darkblade and here are the builds that I use for the light bow gun. The skills that you can gain from armor and even some weapons can help shape your hunter into specialized hunting machines. With the light bow gun, the builds tend to steer towards damage focused or support, and the builds I use mostly reflect this. One thing you should be aware of with the light bow gun, as well as the heavy bow gun in some respect, is that the builds also revolve around the types of ammunition you can use. A lot of the builds do focus on the rapid fire ammunition types, so this is something to be aware of. Anyway, the first build I use is the Elementalist build. This build is a straightforward damage dealing build and focuses primarily on the normal shot 2 with rapid fire ammunition type. Also because the weapon I'm using, the Turoff Blitz shot, doesn't have any elemental ammunition types whatsoever, an elementalist jewel can be used with this weapon, increasing its damage. So for this build you'll need the Nergigante Helm Alpha, the Kulftroff Iris Beta, Kirin Long Arms Gamma, Empress Core Beta and the Kirin Leg Guards Beta. I've also got an Exploited Charm too and the Turoff Blitz shot. Also on the weapon I've stuck a Infinity Increase on it. As for your jewels, the main mandatory ones would be the Elementalist jewel, as I already mentioned. Afterwards you need to take a 4 shot jewel to increase the damage of your normal shots, and then it's a case of increasing your attack and affinity potential. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 335 attack, with 38% affinity, so long as you have maximum stamina, this is thanks to the maximum might skill. No element, average deviation, and when it comes to custom mods, these are really down to personal preference in all honesty, but I've gone with free close range up to increase my damage potential. As for the defense, you're fairly strong against thunder, but you're incredibly weak to ice. As for the skills, you should have the following, attack boost level 4, I always tried to get to attack boost level 4 to at least give me that 5% increase in affinity, ammo up level 3, that increases the clip size of some of the ammunition types we use, critical boost level 3, that increases the damage of our critical attacks, weakness exploit level 3, that gives us 50% extra affinity when we're attacking weak points, maximum might level 3, that gives us up to 30% affinity, so long as we have maximum stamina, stun resistance level 2, tour specialist level 2, blight resistance level 1, these are all byproducts of the actual armor we're wearing, they're not that vital to the actual build, normal shots level 1, which increases damage of our normal shots, critical eye level 1, that increases our affinity, and non-elemental boost level 1, which is thanks to the elementalist duel. As I said, this is a straightforward DPS build, focusing on normal shots. Normal shot 2 with rapid fire means that you'll be hitting quite hard, and as long as you're going for weak points, you should be able to bring a monster down quite quickly. Unfortunately though, a lot of this gear is reliant on Kulftaroff stuff, however a similar build can be recreated if you swap out the Kirin Long Arms Gamma and the Emperor's Call Beta, so long as you replace it with something that has similar decoration slots. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Rapid Fire Spread Shot build. This build focuses on weapons that can use rapid fire spread shot. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using Karma. Not necessarily because it's the best rapid fire spread shot weapon, but more so it's my personal favorite. I like the way it looks, and I'm just fond of the weapon itself. Again, this is a damage focused build. Anyway, for this, you'll need the Dragon Kin Eye Patch Alpha, Empress Mel Beta, Dragon Van Braces Alpha, the Kulftaroff's Malice Beta, and the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. You'll also need the Awakening Charm 2, and for your weapon, you're using Karma with an affinity increase on it. Karma is the Adogaron like bowgun, so it naturally has a high affinity rating on it. As for your jewels, the main mandatory one to take is the Spread Jewel 3. Afterwards, it's a case of adding jewels to increase your attack and affinity. I've also included a four shot jewel to increase the damage of normal shots if I'm not able to get close enough to a monster to use spread shot. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 269 attack, 75% affinity, which is actually 100% if you're going for weak points thanks to weakness exploit. You also have no element, but unfortunately an elementalist jewel doesn't work with this weapon. No deviation. I've used recoil suppressors for the customization mods. And as for your defense, you'll have a strong defense against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak to ice and water. Anyway, as for the skills, you'll have the following. Critical eye level 7, attack boost level 4, ammo up level 3, crit boost level 3, weakness exploit level 2. You only really need level 2 thanks to already having 75% affinity. Peak performance level 2, normal shots, spread shots, and handicraft level 1. Handicraft is not needed on like bowgun builds whatsoever, but unfortunately this is just a byproduct of the actual gear we're wearing. Now as I said, this build is focused all around the rapid fire spread shot, so you can replace Karma with whatever weapon you want so long as it has rapid fire spread shot 
So you could replace Karma with, say, the Cataclysm Trigger, which is the Nurikagante like Bowgun. This has a higher raw attack, but less affinity. Or you could go with the Turoff Blitz Spread, if you were lucky to get your hands on one. Apart from that though, a lot of this gear is endgame stuff and requires additional content to the game. But if you want a similar build, wait till the end where we'll talk about the budget build. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Spread Free build. This is a high damage, close range attack build that utilizes any weapon that has the spread free ammunition type. So for this you'll need the Nergigante Helm Alpha, the Kirin Jacket Gamma, the Kaiser Van Braces Gamma, the Nergigante Coil Beta and the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. I'm also using the Exploited Charm too and for my weapon I'm using Devil's Madness with an Infinity Increase Augmentation and then an Augmentation of your choice. I went with the Slot Upgrade. As for the jewels, you need the following, you'll need the Spread Jewel for this to work and afterwards I've also added a release jewel to increase the ammo up skill and then added jewels to increase my attack and affinity. If you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 342 attack, 40% affinity so long as you have maximum stamina, no element, high deviation and for the customization mods I've gone for close range up and recoil suppressor. You also have a decent defense against fire but you're fairly weak to water and ice. As for the skills, you have Critical Eye level 7, Attack Boost level 6, Ammo Up level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Maximum Might level 2, and Spread Shots level 1. This build is all about getting close to a monster and hitting them in the face with that spread free ammo. The Devil Joe Light Bowgun Devil's Madness works great for this, although you can replace it with other weapons that have spread free ammo. The Devil Joe Light Bowgun though has one of the highest damage values in the game. I would also advise with this build to make use of traps to immobilize monsters enabling you to hit them square in the face. Now this build has some of the highest DPS but its downside is unfortunately you do take a long time to reload the weapon. You could use bowgun customizations to alleviate this but you also need to consider suppressing the recoil of this weapon when firing which I've gone for in this build. Alas though again a lot of the armor used apart from the no gigante stuff is high end stuff but you can easily replace it and come out with a similar build. Anyway let's move on to the next build which is the balance build as I call it. This combines a decent amount of DPS with high survivability and a vast variety of ammunition types. Now for this you'll need the Azure Starlord Crown Alpha, the Raphalos Mel Beta, the Valhasak Braces Beta, the Empress Coil Gamma, Kirin Leg Guards Beta and for the charm it all depends on what monster you're going up against. You're either going to be using the Flood Charm Free or the Thunder Charm Free. This is because this weapon has rapid fire thunder and water ammunition types. So just change the charm to whatever you're fighting. The weapon I'm using that has both these ammo types is the Empress Shell Sticks with an affinity increase augmentation on it. As for the jewels, I've added a release jewel to max out the ammo up. Afterwards, I've added jewels to increase my affinity and a little survivability. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build that has 150 health, 100 stamina, 267 attack, 55% affinity so long as you have maximum stamina. This actually goes to 100% thanks to the weakness exploit. No element, low deviation, I've added reload assist modifications to this weapon and as for your defense you're fairly high against water and thunder but weak against ice and dragon. You also have the following skills, critical eye level 6, health boost level 3, water attack level 3, it would be thunder attack level 3 if you're using the thunder charm instead of the flood charm, ammo up level Level 3, Weakness Exploit Level 3, Evade Window Level 2 which helps when it comes to dodging attacks, Agitator Level 1, this is just a byproduct of the build but it can still be useful, Peak Performance Level 1, Maximum Might Level 1 and the Razor Sharp Slash Spare Shot Level 1. The Spare Shot skill is thanks to the weapon we're using and it can potentially result in a shot actually not consuming any ammunition which is great for ranged weaponry. You've also got the Raphalos Mastery set bonus critical element that increases elemental attacks when you crit a monster. As I mentioned before, depending on what monster you are fighting, switching between water and thunder ammunition types and changing the charm to match whichever you are using is key to dealing high amounts of damage with this weapon. This is thanks to the critical element, thanks to the Raphalos Mastery. Now you can build something similar, although you may need to swap out the Azure Starlord Crown, but this can be swapped out for say the Raph Soul Helm Beta, and you can also replace the Empress Coil Gamma 
just so long as you replace it with something that has similar amount of gem slots. Unfortunately though, the weapon would be the hardest thing to replace, but this build can work with any weapon that has rapid fire water or thunder ammunition types. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is simply the elemental build. This build works with any weapon that has an elemental rapid fire ammunition type. So for the purpose of this video, I've gone with the Diora's Hornet that has the rapid fire ice ammunition type. So, you'll need the Nergigante Helm Beta, the Raf Nail Beta, Kaiser's Van Bracer's Gamma, the Val Hazak Coil Gamma, and the Azure Star Lord Guards Alpha. I've also gone with an Awakening Charm too, and for the weapon, like I said, I'm using the Diora's Hornet. This can have an augmentation of your choice, and as the weapon already has a fairly high affinity rating, I've gone with a health regen augmentation on this. This is probably suboptimal when it comes to damage, but it will help to the build survivability. Anyway, as for the jewels, I've added a release jewel to get the ammo up skill to level 3. Then I've added a mind's eye jewel to actually increase the critical distance of the ammunition types for this weapon. And then I've gone for increasing my affinity as well as the elemental rating of the ammunition type I would be using. So for the purpose of this build, I've added frost jewels to increase the damage of the rapid fire ice ammunition. Most elemental ammunition types seem to only go up to level 3, hence the reason I've only added 3 frost jewels. This also applies to the previous build as well. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 253 attack, 60% affinity, so long as you have maximum stamina. This will be over 100% thanks to weakness exploit. No elements, low deviation. I've added recoil suppressor for the customization mods. And then when it comes to defense, you have strong defense against fire and water, but you're fairly weak to dragon. As for his skills, you have critical eye level five, Ice attack level 3, ammo up level 3, weakness exploit level 3, maximum might level 3, recovery speed level 2, this is really just a byproduct of the gear we're wearing, dragon attack level 1, again just a byproduct of the gear, crit boost level 1, you also have the Raphalos mastery set bonus, critical element, to increase the elemental damage when we crit a monster. Now this build isn't really that difficult to recreate. If you're having trouble or don't have access to some of this content yet, you can replace the Kaiser Van Braces and Valhazak Gamma pieces quite easily. These your Star Lord guards are also replaceable just so long as you make sure you replace one of these pieces with a piece of the Azura Raphalos set or the normal Raphalos set so you get that Raphalos set bonus. Also remember as well, depending on what weapon you're using, you may have to replace the Frost Jewels to match the element of whatever weapon you are using. For example, if you're using the Anjanath Light Bowgun that has rapid fire fire ammunition types, you will want to replace the Frost Jewels with Blaze Jewels instead. But anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Xeno Jiva Divinity build. This build utilizes the set bonus that you get from the Xeno Jiva armor, providing you with the spare shot skill. As I mentioned before, this skill enables your shots to potentially not consume any ammunition when you fire. This build also works with any weapon that has elemental rapid fire ammunition types. So for this you'll need the Azure Star Lord Crown Alpha, the Raphalos Mel Beta, the Xeno Jiva Claws Beta, Xeno Jiva Spine Beta, and the Xeno Jiva Spurs Beta. I've also added an Awakening Charm too, and for my weapon I'm using the Taroth Blitz King. This has an affinity increase augmentation and then an augmentation of your choice. I've gone with the slot upgrade. As for the jewels, I've gone with a release jewel to get the ammo up to level 3. Afterwards, I've added jewels to increase my affinity as well as the elemental damage of the weapon I'm using. So I've added blaze jewels. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have 100 health, 100 stamina, 267 attack, 51% affinity, which is 100 thanks to weakness exploit, so long as you're going for weak points, no element, high deviation, and I've added recoil suppressor for the bowgun customization mods. You'll also have decent defense against water, thunder, and ice, but you're weak against fire and especially dragon. As for the skills, you'll have fire attack level 3, ammo up level 3, weakness exploit level 3, blight resistance level 2, this is just a byproduct of the gear we're wearing, but it still can be useful, critical eye level 2, flinch 3 level 2, again a byproduct, agitator level 1, maximum light level 1, and we'll also have the Xeno Jiva Divinity set bonus, spare shot, as well as the Raphalos Mastery set bonus, critical element. As I said though, this build works with any weapon that has any sort of rapid fire elemental ammunition type available to it. So you don't have to use the Turof Blitz King with this build. Just remember as well to change out the blaze jewels to whatever element you are using. And on top of that, this build is actually quite easy to recreate. The only hard piece may be the Azure Star Lord Crown if you haven't had the chance to do the event quest to get this yet. 
but it can be easily replaced with, say, the RAF Soul Helm Beta. Nonetheless, this is one of the good things about this build is it's quite versatile and it can work with a lot of weapons. But anyway, let's move on to talk about the support build. This build focuses on providing long range support to a team so it doesn't really work that well in solo play but with it you're able to provide your team with healing and you're also able to easily crowd control a monster thanks to the sheer amount of ailments you can put onto it. So for this build you'll need the Empress Crown Gamma, the Empress Mel Beta, the Empress Van Braces Beta, the Empress Call Gamma and the Kirin Leg Guard Beta. I've also gone for an Exploited Charm too and for the weapon I'm using the Xeno Nikina which is the Xeno Jiva like bowgun that has an infinity increase on it. As for the jewels I've gone for a release jewel to get the ammo up to level 3. Afterwards it's a mixed bag. I've added a 4 shot jewel to increase the damage of my normal shot when I'm not using ailment ammunition types. And then afterwards I've gone for jewels to increase my survivability thanks to vitality jewels. I've added sleep jewels to increase the potency of the sleep ammunition types I'll be using. Paralyzer jewels to increase the effectiveness of the paralysis ammunition type I'll be using. I've also added friendship jewels to increase the wide range skill I'll be using and gobbler jewels to increase how quickly I will consume potions and that. Gobbler jewels and friendship jewels are normally found on builds that provide supporting roles to teams as it enables the player to heal themselves as well as their teammate quickly and more efficiently. Anyway, if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health 100 stamina, 253 attack, 10% affinity, which is 60% if you're going for weak points, no element, average deviation. For the bowgun customization, I've added reload assist. And when it comes to defenses, you'll have a high defense against fire and thunder, but you're fairly weak against ice and dragon. You'll also have the following skills, wide range level five, which means that when you consume a potion or use an item, the full effect will be passed to your teammates. You'll have health boost level 3, paralysis attack level 3, sleep attack level 3, ammo up level 3, weakness exploit level 3, peak performance level 3, evade window level 2, speed eating level 2 and normal shots level 1. You'll also have the Lunastra favor set bonus, stamina cap up increasing your stamina to 150 and it provides you with the ballistic skill which increases your critical range. As I said though this build is all about providing fire support through ailment ammunition types namely sleep and paralysis, although this weapon also has access to poison and exhaust ammunition types. These can all crowd control a monster, leaving them open for you and your team to attack. Also, thanks to the wide range skill and the speed eating, you're able to provide a pseudo healer role for you and your teammates. And then finally as well, on top of that, you also have slight damage capabilities thanks to having maxed out weakness exploit, as well as the normal shots level one. This is as long as you are using normal shots. This weapon has access to rapid fire normal shots level 1 and level 2. Unfortunately though a lot of this armor is end game stuff and it's not available on every single system just yet. It will be eventually but not at the moment. But you can build something similar thanks to the weapon only being the Xeno Jiva like Bogo. However the build may not have the full access of support options as it does here. But anyway let's move on to the final build which is the budget build. This is a build you can create regardless of which version of Monster Hunter World you own just so long as you've got to the end game. For the light bowgun budget build, I've gone for a build that is just damage focused, utilizing rapid fire normal shots or spread shots. So for this build, you'll need the Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, the Doba Male Beta, the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, Nokagante Coil Beta, and the Kirin Leg Guards Beta. You also need the Mighty Charm too. And for the purposes of this video, I'm using Karma. You can use Cataclysm's trigger if you wish instead, but I already said that I actually prefer how Karma looks. Also, if you're lucky, add an Infinity Increase augmentation onto this weapon. As for your jewels, now unfortunately because jewels are hard to come by, you can use this build without any of these jewels so to speak. But if you happen to get a release jewel, add it, as well as a spread jewel, four shot jewel, mighty jewel, and then add any attack jewels or critical eye jewels you may have. Anyway, if you've done what I've done in this build, you'll have a build with 100 health, 100 stamina, 281 attack, 75% affinity so long as you've got maximum stamina, no element, no deviation, I've added the close range up and reload assist bogan customizations, and when it comes to defense, you have a decent defense against dragon, but you're fairly weak against water and ice. As for the skills, you'll have attack boost level 7, ammo up level 3, weakness exploit level 3, maximum might level 3, normal shots level 1, and spread shots level 1. This build focuses pretty much primarily on either using rapid fire normal shots or rapid fire spread shots. Personally I enjoy using rapid fire spread shots, I find them more entertaining to play with, but it means you have to get closer to your opponent. 
Nonetheless, if you use the environment and crowd control your opponent, you'll be able to easily tear them apart with this build. So there we have it, those are the builds that I like to use for the light bowgun. Of course Monster Hunter World is always being updated with new monsters and gear which can potentially cause these builds to change and become even stronger. So if any major updates happen to any of these builds, I'll be sure to release an updated video. Also remember that almost any task in Monster Hunter World can be taken on with any weapon and gear set. You don't have to use what is in this video. These are just the sets that I like to use. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative. And until next time, I've been Darkplay, bringing you the builds I use for the light bowgun in Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.